everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry, and today I am back with you with a mega notebook comparison video. I've been kind of teasing this for the last week on social media and even on my NaNoWriMo vlogs. If you haven't seen those yet, definitely check them out. But <laughs> this video is one that I've kind of been putting off for a little bit because it's so daunting. I actually have 10 different notebooks here. These are all either graph or dot grid, which makes them great for bullet journaling. And I get so many questions about notebooks all the time that I wanted to do a mega comparison and kind of see what my actual thoughts are on all of these different notebooks that I get asked questions on. So I have a pretty big variety here, and most of these are an A5 size, except for the two at the bottom are a composition size, they're composition notebooks. And then the one at the top, which I thought I was ordering an A5 size, this is a Nuna notebook, but I must have misread the product description because it's actually a smaller smaller size. So I apologize for that, but in general, this is all going to be apples to apples. All of these are hardcover notebooks, obviously, except for the composition books. And they are all notebooks that people regularly use for bullet journaling. So I thought it would be great to do a comparison. And in the name of time, I'm going to jump right in. I have a feeling this video is going to be pretty long because I'm really going to go deep into each of these notebooks and show you all of the features and what differentiates them from each other. So we're just going to get straight to it and dive in. All right, so in the spirit of being as fair as possible and not putting them in any sort of preferential order, I decided to go from smallest to largest. So we're just gonna start at the very top of this stack and go through them all. For each pen test, I actually used the same exact pens in each notebook just to have kind of an equal representation. So I started with the Pilot G2 in a .38 millimeter tip then a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen in a size S, which is a 0.3 millimeter. The Stettler Tri-Plus Fine Liners, I did black and then several other colors because sometimes different colors of the Stettlers react differently to paper. Then we have the Pilot Metropolitan with Private Reserve Blue Suede ink. Then the Pilot Vanishing Point with Pilot Orochizuku Yuyake ink. My Twisby Diamond 580, this is my daily writer with plain old Noodler's Black in it. My Lamy All Star with Faber-Castell Stone Gray. And then a Visconti Van Gogh, which is a pretty wet writer. And that has Private Reserve Spearmint loaded up inside. And then the final test is the Noodler's Ahab Flex. This pen dumps so much ink down on the page, so I thought it would be a good way to see maybe what paper holds up the best to a lot of ink. And this one has Noodler's Apache Sunset in it. All right, so we are going to begin with the Nuna notebook. Now this Nuna is a dot grid, and the reason that I purchased it was because of the dot grid. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, I did not realize when I bought it that it was the smaller size. And apparently, due to its smaller size, it has a mini dot grid. So I don't know if this is gonna pick this up on camera. I'll try to get close so you can see. But it's a really light orange mini dot grid. And from what I understand, the color of the dot grid relates to the actual cover of the notebook. So this one is like a neon orange. So the dot grid inside mimics that color. Now these Nuna notebooks are actually a bonded leather cover, so they're not technically a hard cover, but they're relatively stiff. They're still soft enough to bend. The cover art on them is silk screen printed. And if you go to Nuna.com, they have a huge variety. I believe this one is actually no longer available. They switch up their cover styles quite often. But this one right here is a 108 by 150 millimeter in size. They also have a larger, almost A5 size, it's 165 by 220. And these notebooks are all made in Germany, but they're made with products based out of Italy, Sweden, and Germany. The paper itself is 120 gram Munken fine paper is what they call it. It's actually a pretty bright white 
and it is thread stitched to lay flat and it does do a pretty good job it seems to pop up depending on where you are in the book I'm sure if I broke the spine a little bit more it would be a lot easier but it, it is thread stitched so that it's supposed to lay a little flatter than other notebooks this one contains 176 pages so it's quite thick even with the thicker paper and then we are just going to jump into the back and look at the pen test that I did here and the pen test on this one actually looks a little bit funky. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can really see what I'm doing. Let's see. Okay, so the pen test in the back here actually looks a little bit funky because I was not used to writing on this really tiny dot grid. So I wasn't sure if I should write within one set of dots or two set of dots. I was very confused. I'm going to grab a little ruler here and show you really how tiny this dot grid is okay so let's see okay so these dots most dot grid notebooks are five millimeters apart these are actually two and a half millimeters apart so two dots or two sets of dots is actually equal to one in our normal dot grid notebook so just a heads up there this is super tiny so if you're looking to buy these definitely check see if it says dot grid or mini dot grid that's the difference but this one actually held up really really well to my pens there was really not a whole lot of feathering down here at the bottom with the noodlers ahab there was a bit of feathering but that's kind of to be expected with that super wet writing pen but I really do like how white the paper is and how the colors just kind of pop. And then on each of these, I actually did a count of the dots that go across top and bottom. So you'll see this on each of the notebooks as well. Then I'm going to flip it over and kind of show you how that looks on the back side of the page. And with these, I really should have done like one page in because <laughs> I forgot about this end piece of paper on most notebooks that's a little annoying. But there was really no bleed through. There was like it tried to a little bit in some spots it tried to right here with that's the apache sunset in the noodlers ahab so that was the wettest writing pen and there was really almost no bleed through at all and it does ghost a tiny bit but really only in those spots where i colored things in the writing itself hardly ghosted at all so overall i really like this notebook the drawbacks for me is I'm kind of partial to having an elastic band to close up my notebook, and I'm also partial to having a ribbon bookmark. Now, I know those are both things that I could put on myself afterwards, but for me, that's what makes it not really work for me. That and the fact that this is actually real, genuine leather for the cover. If you hold it up, you can actually even smell it. Um, it's bonded leather, and it's silk screen printed on the outside, and then it has this cover paper on the inside but it is actual real leather and that's kind of a drawback for me as well. I would prefer a notebook that's more more sustainable and not harmful to animals. So there's that. Up next we have the Piccadilly Essential Notebook. I'm fairly positive that it only comes in black. I have not seen it in any other colors but this notebook is a hardcover. It's 240 pages and it also has a Smithsown binding, so it's supposed to open flat. We're going to open her up and see. One thing that I don't like about this notebook is that the hardcover actually has a little bit of give to it. And you can see when I hold it to the light that the elastic band has left a mark or an indentation in that cover. So that would kind of bother me a little bit. There's even an indentation from... I believe when it was packaged, the bookmark was folded over, and you can see that left a little indentation there. And I've had this notebook for a few weeks now, and that has not gone away at all. So that's something that you're kind of left with permanently there. All right, so we're going to open her up. This notebook is more of an ivory color to the pages, and it's a graph paper. This is 80 GSM, or grams per square meter. It's definitely one of the darker papers in the group that I have for you today. But again, it's a Smithsone binding, so it's supposed to open flat, and it actually does a really good job of doing so without even breaking it in a whole lot. It lays pretty flat, so I do like that about it. It does have the elastic closure, like I said. This one has an expandable interior pocket, so if you use that a lot, maybe to hold stickers or receipts or things like that when you're on the go, that's in there for you. 
And then it has a satin page ribbon, which I like. This notebook itself is five by 8.1 inches. So it's an A5 size, but it's a little narrow. It's actually 127 by 206 millimeters. They also have this available in B5 and B7 size, and it's a quarter inch graph is what they say. So we're gonna look at that and see. And it is indeed a quarter inch graph. So it's actually a little bit, a little bit thinner than a five millimeter ruling. So it's just a tiny bit thinner. This actually goes by inches. So it's a quarter inch, so four squares to an inch. And then you'll see here, this one actually held up really, really well to all of my pens. The only drawback with this one is how dark the paper is. Um, I don't feel like the colors pop as much on this paper. It's not as white as that Nuna notebook. I'm gonna fold this back again. I wish I had skipped a page. But you'll see there's not a lot of ghosting, tiny, tiny bit of bleed through. And the great thing on this paper is that there was no feathering whatsoever. So even with my wetter writing pens, there was no feathering at all, which I thought was awesome. So that is the Piccadilly Essential Gridline Notebook. All right, after that, size-wise, we have the Moleskin Classic. Now, this is one <laughs> that I've gotten so much grief over because I Earlier last year, I did a comparison between a moleskin dot grid and the Leuchterm 1917, and I got a lot of grief for not comparing apples to apples because I used the soft cover version of the notebook. So this time I sought out the hardcover, which was a lot harder to find. It only comes in black, but I found it, I got it, so we're gonna take a peek. Um, the elastic band on this one is a lot firmer than the soft cover, and come to find out, they actually make soft cover elastic bands um, a little looser intentionally so that the notebook doesn't fall over on itself or bend over on itself when you have it closed with the elastic band. So once I realized that, that made a lot of sense, but that was one of my griping points about the moleskin in my last video. But now that I know that, it makes sense, and I will say that this hardcover does have a much firmer elastic band. And then this moleskin is a hardcover, just like the Piccadilly. However, it's not quite, it doesn't have that give to it. So there's no indentations from the elastic band or the bookmark, so it's a nice solid notebook. And this one is 130 millimeters by 210 which is five by 8.25 inches. It's also available in a smaller 90 by 140 millimeter and a larger 190 by 250 millimeter. So this is a dot grid notebook. It's 240 pages, acid free. I could not find on the Moleskin website or in the notebook itself anywhere what the weight of their paper is in this notebook but we're gonna check it out here. It is also thread bound, so it's supposed to lay pretty flat, and it does. It requires a little bit of scooching, is that a word? <laughs> scooching for it to lay flat, but that's no different than most thread bound notebooks. You kinda have to break it in a little bit. And this paper is a little bit lighter in color than the Piccadilly, so it's still in ivory, but it's a little bit lighter. We're gonna to turn to the back page here so I can show you. It also has the expandable inner pocket and the satin page ribbon. And overall, this one held up really, really well to my fountain pens and other pens as well. We'll flip this page over so that you can see. For the most part, there was no bleed through. There was some bleed through in these little corners of the squares and then there was a lot of bleed through here with the super wet Noodler's Ahab fountain pen, and then there was a tiny bit of bleed through with that Pilot vanishing point. So I think depending on the ink that you're using in this notebook and definitely the nib size of your fountain pen, that's gonna make a difference. One thing I will say is there's a ton of ghosting, so you can see, you can actually almost read everything that I wrote through the back side, which we haven't seen in the last two notebooks. So that's something to consider if ghosting bothers you. This one might not be the one for you. But overall, I think it's pretty good. Not bad at all. Okay, let's move on to our next size notebook. 
And this, not to be confused with the Piccadilly Essential Grid, this is actually by Peter Popper Press. It's called Essentials. It's also a grid line notebook, but this is more of a true A5 size. And this is a hardcover as well, kind of akin to the moleskin hardcover. It does not leave an indentation. It's nice and hard. It doesn't have any give to it. And this one is 210 by 148 millimeters or five and a half by eight inches. So it's more of a true A5 size. It's 192 pages of 100 GSM acid-free archival paper. So we're gonna open this one up and you'll be able to see here on the inside, this paper is nice and light. I can actually compare it side by side with the Piccadilly, which is the other graph notebook that I have, but you can really see the difference in the color of the paper. So the Piccadilly is a lot more yellow ivory. This one is a lot, lot lighter. Okay, and then again, this is quad ruled, so I believe it's done by inches. So let's look here on the inch side. And yes, it's a quarter inch per square. So four squares per inch on this graph ruled notebook. Again, we have the expandable pocket in the back and the satin page marker. And then we're gonna to flip to the pen test. And this one here actually did really well as well. And there's really, I'm sorry, I'm trying to lean in to get a good look at it again. There's really no feathering to be had on the front side except for a little bit when I really flex to that pen down here at the bottom. And flipping it over to the back to check, you can see, now this one confused me a little bit because there was not a lot of ghosting, a little bit to be had, and there was some bleed through on those Stettler Tri Plus fine liners. I don't know if you can really see that, but if you see those little corners and the lines, it bled through there, but then all of my fountain pens, except for the Ahab at the very bottom, those didn't bleed through at all. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, I don't know if it was user error <laughs> when I was testing it, but for the most part, I'd say this one holds up really, really well to fountain pens and all of your felt tip markers and things like that as well. And this one, again, is a lay flat binding, which is thread stitch, and this notebook actually does a really, really good job. All it requires is a little zhuzh to make sure that the pages open flat and you are good to go. Okay, let's move on to the Leuchtturm. This is the Leuchtturm 1917 dotted. This is in the A5 size. And this one is one that they actually sent me kind of as a thank you because I'm always talking about their notebooks because I really do love them. But yeah, they sent me this one. So normally it's not gonna be personalized like that unless you order it that way. But this is in the purple. One thing that I love about Leuchterm notebooks is all of the different colors that they come in. So if that's something that's important to you, this one might be your pick. But we're gonna open her up and see what all the extra features are in this notebook that a lot of them don't have. So this one's a dot grid again. We've got our little information packet here in the beginning. You got a place for name and address, which the only other one I think so far that has that is the moleskin, it has a place for lost and found information. Um, this notebook actually has a index in the front. So you've got a three page index before it starts into your dot grid. And this is the only notebook out of the bunch that is paginated, meaning it has page numbers. So it has 249 numbered pages. It's also thread bound to lay flat. And this is one that you do have to break in. It doesn't really lay flat all on, all on its own, but once you break it in and kind of squish the spine a little bit, it does a really, really good job of laying flat. And then this one actually comes with two page markers. And it's one of the things that I love about these notebooks because I like to keep a page marker on my monthly spreads and then on my current day within my bullet journal. So I love that it has the two bookmarks for that. And then move to the back. You also have your expandable pocket like the others. And then this notebook actually comes with some stickers. Now these are for archiving your notebook when you're done. So you can put a sticker on the front and then a sticker along the spine so that when it's sitting on your shelf, you know what's in each notebook. I think that's a pretty cool touch. And then 
at the very end of the notebook, there's actually eight perforated pages. So if you're ever on the run and you need to jot something down and tear it out, maybe give someone a note or something like that, you can turn to this back section here and tear out a page. It's perforated kind of along that first line of dots there. And we are going to look at the paper itself now. I think I forgot to mention the dimensions. I said that this was an A5, but it's uh, 145 by 210 millimeters. And the paper itself is acid-free. It's 80 gram paper, and it's not quite as thick as some of the others, but that actually allows them to have more pages than any of the others. So this one has 249 numbered pages. And as far as the paper quality itself, this is actually kind of an ivory. I would say it's in between the Piccadilly and the Essential, so it's not quite as dark as the Piccadilly, but it's not quite as white as the Essential Gridline Notebook. Um, with this, you're gonna notice there's really no feathering to be had. The Everything writes really, really smoothly on this paper. Now turning it over, you'll see we have quite a bit of ghosting with the Leuchterm, but no real bleed through to speak of. We have a tiny bit of bleed through trying to happen with the super wet Noodler's Ahab, but otherwise nothing really bled through. So as long as you're okay with a little bit of ghosting, which personally I am, I find that once I write on the other side of the page, it's really not noticeable at all. But if that's something that bugs you, you might consider one of the thicker, thicker papered notebooks. That was hard to say, like a tongue twister. But overall, this notebook, I, I do wish sometimes it had a little better quality paper, but the fact that nothing really bleeds through, it's really just some ghosting. All of the additional features for this one make it my favorite notebook. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm not trying to be biased, but I really, I kind of am, I guess, because I really do love this notebook. I love the pagination or the page numbers. I love the extra bookmarkers. I love the index in the front. So all of those things combined kind of set this one above and beyond for me, but it's all personal preference. It depends on what things are important to you. So think about that. Don't just go off of my preferences when you're thinking about ordering a new notebook. Think about what you actually need and what actually matters to you. All right, so after that little mini rant, we're gonna move on to the next notebook pretty quickly here. And that is the Rhodia Web Notebook. So the Rhodia Web Notebook is another one of my favorites because it is incredibly fountain pen friendly. This notebook comes in a hardcover, either orange or black. And I will say this is one of those covers that has a little bit of give to it, so you will notice with the band, there's a slight indentation there, not quite as much as the Piccadilly, but it's still noticeable if that's something that bothers you. But this one does come in orange and black, which are Rhodia's signature brand colors. And it also has a satin page marker in the middle and an expandable pocket in the back, just like a lot of the rest. Now this one has Let's get this little guy out of here, probably an inspection sticker. The one thing that bothers me about the page markers, and I know this is probably being nitpicky with the Rhodia, is how short they are. So when your notebook's closed, if you go to expand it, I don't know if you can really see that, but you have to literally like pull it open. I know it's nitpicking, but for example, with something, I'm gonna use the moleskin as an example, but with the Molson, this one is long enough to where when you pull that page marker over, you can actually flip it all the way without your hand scraping against the notebook. So I don't know if that's important to anyone but me, but something to think about. All right, so with the Rhodia, it is an Italian leatherette cover, which I really like. It's 145 by 210 millimeters. So it's a classic A5 size, five and a half by eight and a quarter inches. And this one is 90 gram ivory paper. And this is one of the darker papers as well. It's right on par with the Piccadilly. It's really a nice deep ivory. And one thing you'll notice when you open this notebook is it's so, the paper is so smooth. It feels like there's almost like a coating on there of sorts. Um, but it's 90 gram ivory paper. It's acid free and pH neutral and 
It also is thread bound, so it opens pretty flat. You do have to give it some love to get it to do so, but I think it's worth it with this notebook. <laughs> All right, and this is a dot grid as well, another five millimeter, standard five millimeter size dot grid. And then we're gonna take a look at the paper quality itself now. And you'll see, I mean, inks on this paper are just gorgeous. Like the colors just come to life and it's such a pleasure to write on. One thing to note with this notebook is that since it is so smooth, um, the inks can sometimes take a little bit longer to dry than they would on other more porous paper. So something to consider maybe if you're left-handed and you're worried about a lot of smudging, this one might not be the best for you. Or you could invest in a piece of blotter paper that you could close in between your pages um, once you're done just to make sure you don't get any ink on the opposite side of the page. But there's really no feathering at all in any of these inks, which I really love. And then turning it over, you'll see one of the reasons that this notebook is touted as such a great fountain pen notebook is that there's really, there's almost no ghosting and there's absolutely no bleed through. You can see this one tried to a tiny, tiny bit right here. I don't know if you can even tell, but it tried to right there. But otherwise, no bleed through, no ghosting. And it's just a really great, well-made notebook. So I really love the Rhodia. Let's get this guy back in here and move on. All right. All right, now this next one is one that I don't see a lot of people using, but I really, really love this notebook. And this is the Seven Seas Crossfield from Nanami Paper. This is a notebook that's made in Japan and it's made with Tomoe River paper, which those of you that are fountain pen enthusiasts, you know that Tomoe River paper is touted as some of the best paper in the world for fountain pens. So this notebook comes in a nice little cardboard sleeve and it's an A5 210 by 148 millimeters. And the Tomoe River paper is so thin, y'all, they can actually fit 480 pages in a notebook this thick. So if you're looking for a notebook that's gonna last you maybe all year or more than just a few months like your normal bullet journal would, this might be one to consider. And then this notebook itself is actually a cloth cover. It's a flexible, semi-stiff, coated fabric cover. I was trying to say that, that's kind of a mouthful. But it's got kind of this cloth material on the outside, and then it is thread-bound or smith-sewn, and it actually comes with a sheet of pink blotter paper which is really nice if you're using fountain pens or any other pens that tend to smudge easily. It's nice to kind of close this blotter paper up in your notebook when you're done with your page to kind of absorb some of that ink and make sure it doesn't go to the other side. And this one is a five millimeter dot grid, but it's actually a cross grid, hence the cross field. And if I zoom in, actually I'm just gonna pull it up to you you can kind of see that each one of those dots is actually a tiny little cross. And it's a really light blue, unintrusive grid. So I really, really like that. This is one notebook that does not have any of the extra frills, but I think for those that are looking for a notebook with a lot of pages and super fountain pen friendly, this might be one for you. We're gonna flip to the last page where I did the pen test and you will see on this Tomoe River paper, I mean, fountain pens write beautifully on this paper, y'all. So there's a lot of shading and pretty um, definition in the different inks that I used. You can really see that there. There's no feathering whatsoever. And then flipping it over, this is one paper that is gonna ghost a lot. And it's due to the nature of the paper itself. It's so, so thin. It's so much thinner than any of the other notebooks. and. The fact that they can make a paper this thin where the ink does not bleed through on the other side is just a marvel to me. But you can really see a lot of ghosting, so if that's something that bothers you, might not be the notebook for you, or you might decide to just write on one side of the page. I've seen a few people do that. But yeah, despite the ghosting, there is absolutely no bleed through whatsoever on the other side of the paper. So that is the seven C's Crossfield. It's a really simple minimalist notebook and I do kind of love that it comes in this little craft sleeve. 
kind of adds a nice little touch and makes it nice and pretty sitting on your shelf. All right, so we'll put that back in there and move on to the next one. All right, up next we have the Baron Fig Confidant. Now this notebook is actually one that was started, it was launched on Kickstarter and it became really, really popular amongst a bunch of groups there for a while. And I always kind of wanted one, I wanted to give it a try, so I was excited to do this video so that I could buy one. But it comes in this gorgeous packaging. If you see it, it comes in this nice, hard cardboard box. So we're gonna open it up and then it comes with a nice little information packet on the inside. One cool thing that it says on the back is you just planted a tree. So apparently for every Baron Fig notebook that you buy, they plant a tree, which I think is really, really neat. Uh, but these are available on baronfig.com. I'm gonna get it out here. And we'll set that to the side. Okay, so this is the Confidant. It's a hard cover, but it's coated in a cloth, and it comes in a gray, like a light gray like this one, and a charcoal, which is a deeper, darker gray. It comes in several different formats, but I got the dot grid, the five millimeter dot grid, and it claims to open flat, so we're gonna open her up. I guess you could write your information there in the front, and for the most part, it does open pretty flat. The paper in this one, it definitely doesn't have a yellowish tint to it or even white. It's almost reminds me of like a super light gray, um, almost white gray, if that makes sense at all. But it has a really light gray dot grid. It comes with a yellow bookmark. And I think that's one of their signature colors there at Baron Fig. But again, it has one of those short bookmarks that you kind of have to just turn the page when you get to it. And then at the very end of the book, I did my did my paper test. Let's get this down here. Um, one thing I'll note about this notebook as well, it also has the perforated pages. So it actually has 12 perforated pages in the back and it's 192 pages altogether. This notebook size is a little bit different and it's something that folks over at Baron Fig talk about on their website that they kind of wanted to recreate the dimensions for a typical notebook and through some sort of studies they figured out that these were great dimensions for a notebook. So this one is 5.4 by 7.7 .7 inches. So it's a little bit smaller than an A5 and they don't give a whole lot of information about the paper itself. All they say is that it's acid-free fine grain paper. And one thing to note here, I don't know if you can really see this, I'm gonna try to get it up close and see if I can get the camera to pick this up. But within, when I wrote with this ink, the paper has some weird quality to it to where it almost looks like you drew it with um, like colored pencil or something. There's some weird spotting that happens. Let's see if you can maybe see that. I think it's picking it up. But yeah, there's some weird spotting that happens within your ink. And then also when you go over one of the dots, you can kind of see the dot come through the ink itself. I don't know if it's really picking this up, y'all, but we'll see. But you can see everything looks kind of spotty, and I think that has to do with the fine grain paper that they say that they use, I'm not sure. But honestly, from far away, you can't even tell, and I, I honestly don't think it would bother me in the long run. And overall, I really, really like this notebook. I'm not sure how I feel about the size. I'm kind of partial to my A5, but if that's something that you were thinking about, maybe something a tiny bit smaller, but not, not quite a pocket size notebook, this might be for you. Uh, this one doesn't come with any of the extra frills. It does have the perforated pages, but no pocket, no elastic band, but it does lay closed really, really well when you set it down. And it really is a beautiful, beautiful notebook. So that is the Baron Fig Confidant. So let's put him back and move on to the next one. All right, up next I have two of the cheapest notebooks that you can possibly buy for bullet journaling. These are quad rolled 
composition notebooks. And there are a lot of different brands out there on the composition notebooks. One of the most popular is probably Mead. And I wanted to buy a Mead graph ruled notebook, but I couldn't find one. So I got the closest that I could find. This one right here is by Roaring Spring and it has 80 sheets, five by five quad ruled. And it's pretty much your typical composition notebook. It has that hard cardboard cover, this kind of neat binding on the side. It's a sewn binding. And then this one has 80 pages. And I'll show you our little pen test in the back. This is 9.75 by 7.5. So these are a lot larger than the A5. This is actually more of a B5 size notebook. But you can see the pen test here in the back and surprisingly, as I was writing, it did pretty well. Um, the ink did start to bleed and feather a little bit in some of these wetter inks, but overall I was actually kind of impressed. And if we flip over to the back, this is where I got a little disillusion. I was like, okay, this one does not hold up well to fountain pen ink or even any of the regular felt tip markers that I use. So the Pilot G2, you can see there's a lot of ghosting there, but it did not bleed through the paper. Everything else bled through. Something to consider if you're thinking about starting in a cheap composition notebook like this. Maybe use just some regular ballpoint pens like the Pilot G2 and kind of steer clear, maybe use colored pencils and things like that that aren't gonna bleed through the paper. And then the other one that I picked up is actually the Staples brand composition notebook. And I was a little disappointed when I got it because I thought it was gonna be like that hard cardboard cover like this one, but it's actually more of just like a cardstock, so like a regular notebook. And we'll flip it open, you'll see just like a regular composition book, it has some information on the front and back. This one is actually 100 pages, so it's a little bit thicker. And again, it's quad ruled, so four squares per inch. And we're gonna flip to our last page. And this one actually held up a little bit better as far as ink bleed and uh, feathering on the front side of the page. It's not quite as much as the other Roaring Spring notebook. And then flipping it to the back, it even held up a little bit better as far as bleed through from one side of the page to the other. So you'll see here the Pilot G2, there's some ghosting, but it did not bleed through. Faber-Castell did not bleed through. Everything else pretty much did. The Twisby with Noodler's Black, that did not bleed through at all. Neither did the Lamy All-Star. Everything else, for the most part, bled through at least a tiny bit. But something to consider if you're looking at different composition books and maybe read the reviews and see. But I just got these two brands because I didn't want to have a bunch of composition notebooks laying around that I'm not going to use. But that's just something for you to consider that not all composition books are created equal and different pens are going to react differently. So one thing that I always recommend when you have a new notebook is do a little pen test like I did in the back of each of these notebooks and see how your particular pens and inks react to your notebook on the very back page before you decide to dive in and maybe ruin your first page or two with a pen or ink that might bleed through. All right, y'all, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. I appreciate you bearing with me. I know this was a much longer video than normal, but I thought it would be so fun to kind of compare and give you an idea of all of these side by side. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, anything at all, drop them into the comments section below, and I'll be more than happy to join in the conversation down there with you all. And I will look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye.